Hey guys, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Shallow Dive. Uh, today we are going to sloppily texture our cube. First thing, we need a way of loading images to our texture resources. Now my tool of choice for this is DirectX Text. It makes it pretty simple and straightforward. We just need a way of getting in this third party dependency easily. Because that's the mandate of this series, it's got to be simple. So we hit up the documentation. There should be an installation guide in here somewhere, right? NuGet is a very easy way to do it. I'm a VC package guy, but NuGet is gonna be the simplest solution for us here. So, click the one that says DX12, package manager. So there's a command line thing. We'll just copy this. Tools, NuGet package manager console, package me. And done, okay. So now what do we do? We're gonna include just put that bad boy right here. Include direct x text. There she is. All right. So we now have access to that. Now, one thing you need to do. Well, I'm gonna add in here shortcut to the views namespace because I love my views. Now, when you use the direct x text library, you need to initialize com because it uses com stuff in order to load images. You might say, Chili, we've been using COM the whole time. Isn't DirectX 12 COM? That's not really COM. It's more like nano COM. It's COM light. So we have to initialize the actual COM infrastructure if we're going to use DirectX Text. Now for texturing our geometry, that's going to change our geometry. We're going to need to have a texture coordinate, our UVs, and we're going to have to put those into the vertex data. You can't really properly texture a cube like this with only eight vertices, it's, it's not going to work very well because you don't have no way of unwrapping it properly. So this is going to be a, a nasty job, but you'll see. It, it'll, we'll get something going. Now, the most complicated part of this whole ordeal is going to be loading, creating and loading the, the texture. So we will start with our com pointer to an ID3D12 resource. Everything's a resource. Firstly, we need to load so load from wick file is beautiful. You give it a file name. You give it, uh, here we go. We give it a reference to a scratch image object and it will fill that with the data from the texture. Now we also want a MIP chain and DirectX text has your back there as well. So we create another scratch image to hold the full MIP chain. Uh, scratch image type, it's not just a single image. It can hold like a whole lot, like an array of images or whatever you want to call it, a MIP chain. It's a, it's a fancy boy is what I'm trying to say. And you call generate MIP maps. You pass it in pointer to an image. So if you call get images, it's going to get you basically a pointer to the array of images in the scratch image. So you're going to get the pointer to the first one, which is the only one because we just loaded a single JPEG. And you specify what kind of filter you want to do. Give me your MIP chain. What's this zero do? What's this zero for? Number of levels. I think this one means like generate all the levels all the way down. And there you go. Now this scratch image is going to hold our MIP chain. This one is just, we don't care about it anymore. All right, let's create the resource that's going to be used for rendering. We're going to kind of cache a reference to the first image in the MIP chain, the top of the MIP chain, because that has all the important information. Then we're going to create our resource description here, texture desk. So it's a texture 2D and we use the chain base to get the width and the height of that. It's not an array. It has as many MIP levels as we have image count in our MIP chain. Format comes out of the top image in there. Count, sample, blah, 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 blah. It's all good. It's all good. Set up our heap properties. You know what's coming next. Yeah, we're creating our committed resource. So this part at least is the same as um, for buffers. This part obviously different, but there you have it. And now we want to create the intermediate upload buffer. But before we do that, uh, we're going to we're going to collect some information that will be useful. So, you know me, I'm highly ranges pilled. Let's do this with ranges. We're going to create a range of uh, indices from zero to number of MIPS minus one. And then we're going to transform that range by, by basically getting a pointer to each image in the MIP chain and creating a sub-resource data out of that. So we transform this range of numbers into a range 
of sub-resource data, and then we store that in a vector. And this is going to be useful for when we have to do our copying. So now it's time for our intermediate upload buffer. Uh, we have our heap, which is up type upload. Now to figure out the size that is required for a buffer, there's a nice little function. This I don't think this is even Direct3DX. No, it is Direct3DX. Never mind. I lied. But it's nice, and we can just calculate the required size for an intermediate resource by giving it the original resource, then the first sub-resource that we're going to be covering in this intermediate buffer, and the number of sub-resources that we're going to be covering. And using that information, this function will be able to tell us exactly what size of buffer that we need. Very nice. Now we use D3DX to create a buffer descriptor from that size. And then once again, we create, you know, committed resource. Now notice for this committed resource, you don't have to put for the, for the upload, it doesn't care about the full description about the, the structure of the data, the texture. As long as you got the size, it can just be any sort of dumb buffer because it's only for uploading. It's never going to be referenced for rendering. All right, now you get the usual. We are going to get our command list ready for copying. Now here's where things diverge from what we've been doing with our buffers. Uh, we now have to first copy from the CPU to our uh, intermediate resource and then copy from our intermediate resource to our rendering resource. But copying textures, especially ones with MIP chains and stuff like that, is a lot more complicated than just copying uh, buffers. So for this, we will be using a single Direct3DX function that does both stages. It does the CPU copy and the GPU copy all together. And so that's why we have to actually get our command list ready before we start doing the CPU copy because it's all bundled up together here. So updates subresources, it takes in pointer to command list, pointer to the destination texture, the intermediate texture, pointer to the data, subresource data and the size. And this, by the way, this is that whole vector of descriptors here. And I don't know what these zeros are for, but uh, we can figure it out. Yeah, so these are just like offsets for subresource, but we're just, we're doing the whole thing, so we start from zero. And yeah, it it's builds up your command list, it does the, the CPU copying all at once. And so it's very nice to have. You know, for simple buffers, I was fine just using the straight Direct3D12 stuff because it's dirt simple, but for complicated stuff like textures with MIP levels, I am definitely going to be using Direct3DX for that. Now we learned our lesson with the uh, resource states here. We got to put these barriers after we do the copy. Otherwise, uh, the debug layer is definitely going to be very wroth with us. And then after that, it's just the same stuff that we've been seeing. So just finishing up the command list, executing it, waiting for it to complete. And there you go. We have gotten our resource all uploaded, but we're just getting started here. There's plenty more to go. We now need to create a descriptor, a view of that texture, shader resource view. And in order to do that, we need a heap for our descriptor. And this is the same kind of heap that is required for um, render target views and depth stencil views. Um, but here now the type is going to be type CBV, SRV, UAV. And it's got to be shader visible, obviously. We've only got one descriptor in this heap, and we're going to create a handle pointing to that descriptor. And finally, we have to create the descriptor in the heap. So we set up our desk structure. It has the format. It has dimensions. What components map to what? We just use the, the, the simplest component mapping. And texture 2D, how many MIP levels do you got? We set that up. And there you go. You build, you make that construct that in the heap and that is now available, can be accessed via the, uh, the handle to the descriptor. All right, so now the stuff that the shader is going to be accessing is different. We got to change the, uh, the root signature, but before we do that, we're not going to be using this color buffer anymore, so let's just nuke it. And so we nuke this, and in here we are going to be creating a different entry. So we create a uh, structure that describes a range of descriptors in a descriptor heap. So shader resource view range. There is one descriptor. The base register is zero. 
and then we pass in descriptor ranges. So we init as descriptor table. You can use multiple descriptor ranges to do that. So you're basically passing in an array with the size and then the pointer to the first element. But we only have one thing that serves as the array of size one. All right, so we bind this as a descriptor table. Now you might notice that before we were putting the view directly in the root signature. Uh, but now the root the root signature, root parameters, or whatever you want to call it, they're going to hold a pointer to a table that is going to hold the pointer or the descriptor. So it's a little different. You can't, here's the thing, you can put the view of a constant buffer directly in your root, but you cannot put a view of a texture, shader resource view, directly in the root. You have to bind it as a descriptor table. It's just, just the way it goes. Those are the rules. Now we're also going to need a sampler to sample that texture. So we define it as a, just a static sampler. It doesn't change over the course of drawing. And it's just a simple linear filter, right? This is gonna bind to register zero, S zero, I guess it is, I forget. And yeah, so now, when, where do we create this stuff here? Yeah, so when we initialize our root signature descriptor, we pass in root parameters here, we got to now pass in the uh, the static samplers. That's an array of static samplers, but there's only one, so we just do a pointer to the one. And there you go. That's the root signature all taken care of. Now, yeah, our input layout. In addition to position now, we also need texture coordinate, and that is going per vertex data. Yeah, this is all fine. This is two component, RG, that's UV. Nothing else changes for the pipeline state object. So now we, when we're going to draw, we got to bind different things. Obviously, we're not going to bind the constant buffer. It doesn't exist anymore. We actually have to bind two things. The first thing is we have to bind the heap that contains the SRV uh, descriptor. So we bind that heap. And then after we've bound the heap, then we can bind the, root, uh, the descriptor table to the root. So this is item one of our root descriptor table. And we just give it the GPU descriptor handle for heap star. I don't know if we could use our handle in here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This works. So yeah, you got to bind the heap and then you got to bind the table that is described in the root signature. And let's just draw one cube. We don't need to complicate things with two cubes. All right, now obviously our shader is going to have to change here. Uh, for the pixel shader, we now don't have this constant buffer. Instead, we take in texture, register T0, and sampler, register S0. Instead of taking in the uh, primitive ID, we are going to take in the UV texture coordinate. And then we're going to sample our texture using our sampler and our UV. And there you go. For the vertex shader or output, we have to output texture coordinate. We take that in from, you know, the input assembler. And then we got to set our UV in here before we return that structure. Okay. So, almost done. Now we just need a texture. So just drop cubeface.jpg in the debug folder where everything is run from. And that's this one. Beautiful, beautiful Harambe. Dicks out, gentlemen. Dicks out. Okay. Now, let's see if it builds. Quite likely that it won't build. There'll be something I missed. Okay, it almost worked except that there was an unresolved external symbol IID blah blah blah. So there's like these GUIDs that, and I don't know why, like it, it, we weren't getting problems with it before, but as soon as I added like, I think it's, it's gotta be DirectX text that was the, the problem. But anyways, I can show you one way of fixing this and there are probably other ways of doing it, like linking to a certain library. But if we include init GUID here, uh, it should work. It apparently works. Don't ask me why it works, because I don't know. But it works. All right, now, moment of truth. Does it run? It runs, okay, well, we don't even get any, uh, don't even get any errors in here. All right, surprisingly painless. That's, that's what you get for when you prepare and you, you code it up beforehand. But anyways, yeah, ah, it's looking nice. The, the sampling is looking very beautiful on Harambe. It's looking very smooth. Obviously, you get these stretches on the top and the bottom because you can't map all the faces of the cube nicely. It just don't work. And to do that, you need to unwrap the UVs. You need to duplicate some vertices and stuff like that. So it's fine. It's fine.
So there you have it. Here's how you can load a texture and use it to render some geometry in Direct3D 12. I'm not exactly sure what the next topic to cover is. I have to think about that one. Um, but there, there are plenty of things to go over, so we're not, we're not done here yet. Uh, so if you want to see more, do hit that like button. It helps a lot. And uh, I will see you again with some more Direct3D 12 Shallow Dive.